Stefan Marsh has worked as a mastering engineer on award-winning film scores from films like Life of Pi and The Notebook, as well as albums from artists like Incubus and Kenny Loggins, just to name a few. I sat down with Stefan over a video call to talk about acoustics. My name is Stefan Marsh, and I'm a mastering engineer. I have a company called Marsh Mastering and a, so a cutting studio called La Lathe Room. So we handle essentially the last step in music production before it goes off to its audience. There's a deficit of acoustic knowledge in the community because it's one of the more it's one of the harder things to grasp, I guess. And it's one of the things that people are less interested in when they're real interested in making records. They have less interest in acoustics, but so I think there's inherently a deficit of knowledge. And there's also an abundance of misknowledge or misinformation out there as well to fill that void. And I think GIK has been really proactive about going out there and giving away that knowledge for free in the interest of sort of raising raising the level of everybody's understanding of the best ways to deal with some of these problems. And it's the unpredictability of, of acoustics, I think, that, that drives people crazy and makes them intimidated by it. Once you, once you begin to view it as a set of problems that have solutions, and it's simply a matter of applying the correct solution to the problem, then all of a sudden it's more about possibilities and less about limitations. And uh, GIK does that for me. How does this panel work at 100 hertz? What does this panel do at 50 hertz? What does this panel... Okay, pull up the test results. You know, here's actual real world data from a legitimate testing company that will say what this is gonna do, what that's gonna do, and makes the results predictable. How do acoustics factor into your sound mastering? Uh, I think you generally see a lot more diffusion, especially back wall diffusion and behind the speaker diffusion in mastering rooms than you see in the control rooms. Um, in that you're not trying to, you want to, I always say, you want to lay bare the audio. You want to know what's there and what you're dealing with, but you don't want it to sound bad inherently. So um, I find that in that sense, I prefer diffusion over absorption. I'd rather scatter it and move it around the room, but retain some of that energy as opposed to simply absorbing it all, which is like I said, I, why I have, I think there's one, two, three, four, there's a half a dozen monsters in here and they all have scatter fights in them just to help with that a little bit. But I consider mastering to be an outside in art. Whereas we're trying to step back and listen to what, out, what everything that's taking place across the stereo field, wherever they've placed it in the mix, height-wise, depth-wise, what kind of treatment they've given ambient-wise to place it in a certain atmosphere or a certain space. And I'm trying to evaluate that on its merits without any allegiance to any player or any part or any individual sonic note. That's a way different kind of listening and thought process and interpretive skill than when you're sitting there with you know, God, 80 faders, 96 faders, 40 fader, however many faders you got in front of you. There's a certain quality to mastering. You know, a lot of people think mastering is like matching song to song to song and that's all it is, but there's a certain inherent kind of quality to well-mastered music and I can't really describe it, but once you recognize it, you understand it on a level that allows you to see it within different versions of things and you don't actually have to have them all be the same color. They don't all need to be a shade of blue for it to be well-mastered. They just need to fall within a certain range of brackets and those are pretty broad when it comes right down to it. What are some common mistakes people make when setting up their rooms? In a good room, it's funny, I always you can always sort of tell like who's got it going on. You look at their mastering room, if they have a whole mess of gear and a billion speakers, they're probably clueless. And I don't mean that in a mean way, I just mean like they clearly are not getting a clear idea of what they have because they feel like they need all those different opinions to inform theirs. You know what isn't in the studio at all? A single piece of acoustic treatment. There's a billion computers and whiz bangs and amps and keyboards and guitars and all this other stuff. Not a single piece of acoustic treatment. In a drywall spare bedroom of a house. It's like, how are you ever going to make anything that you, how are you, A, how are you going to know what the heck you've got? And then you're going to send it to somebody like me who goes like, wait a minute. You know, it's like, man, if you could make better decisions and you were better informed, I wouldn't have to try to, I wouldn't have to have the hard conversation with you where and I tell you, by the way, did you know your bass guitar's out of phase? Did you notice that when you were mixing? And the answer is no, because they're in this room that has this thing, or that room that has that thing. Or... A friend of mine, my friend Danny, he did. He come, he built out his garage, and it was interesting because we started in one corner of the room and began to work our way around the room, and it was literally like sonically painting the room. As you, every single panel that went up, you could. We were kept remarking to each other how much more we could hear it. Because my rooms have always been like, I order everything and it all gets installed and then I walk in and go, yeah, it sounds fantastic. I'd never been to the experience of like, literally like painting good acoustics into the room with every single panel we hung. It was one of the most satisfying processes ever. Um, and I definitely, if you're going to treat a room yourself, like install it yourself. 
because the, the listening to everything go in like that is, uh, is pretty cool. What do you like about GIK products? If you're going to be professional in this business and you're going to put yourself out there for sale in terms of your services, then you need to present a professional appearance. And there's a lot of acoustic treatment that in my mind doesn't look very professional. Um, it looks like you emptied out your packing boxes and hung it on the wall and that's cool. And some of that stuff has a function, but it's certainly not a, you can't create a system, an acoustic system to treat a room. You can treat a problem within a room. Um, and I think that's the, the big deal with, with GIK. It's like you, you guys are trying to, nobody tried to sit there and say, okay, how, mu how much stuff can we shove in his room? It was all about what's the solution to the problem of we need to acoustically treat this room and provide the clients with you know these three things or whatever. They all serve a purpose and they all work in conjunction with each other to create an environment that lets me do what I do without thinking about, well, it feels a little bassy, but is it a little bassy or is that just my room? Should I go stand in the corner and see what the bottom end feels there? Should I open the door? Should I close it? Should I check it on headphones or, you know? I can work in this room on one set of speakers at one volume all day long and I know everything's going to translate. Literally every single person has walked into the room and said, oh my God, where are the subs? Like the bottom end of this room is so on point. It's ridiculous. Um, and that's all GIK. So what keeps you coming back to GIK? I have never had a better relationship with a company that seems to get what the hell I'm doing. They took the time to understand what my problems were and what my needs were and then address them fully and completely. If I'm gonna take on a prospect of building an East Coast studio, of building out a lathe room, um, I need to know that I have the support that's gonna be able to put the thing and put a plan into action and get me an effective result at a price I can anticipate and, and deliver. You can go online and you can probably chat directly with at least two or three people from that company any given day, almost any time of the day, and get actionable uh, information that is not simply a sales pitch. I mean, that's invaluable. From a business standpoint, in the music business, like reliability is a big deal. And I always try to definitely deliver that for my clients and GIK delivers that for me too. So 